Toronto, 1942. I arrived, I think in January, from Montreal, where I spent a few days with my sponsor, Colonel Burks, in high style at the top of Westmount Mountain, after spending a year in the internment camp in Sherbrooke in a kind of factory setting with 800 others, one year without ever getting out of that compound. And there I was in Toronto, a free man. I've, I had seen Montreal, a bright, lovely city of lights. And I came to Toronto. And though I was, uh, words cannot describe the joy of being alive and free after such a long time in confinement, I was amazed and kind of amused by the drabness of that boring city. I did not know, I'd never been in Manchester or Liverpool or didn't, didn't know Yorkshire or any of the northern cities, but it seemed to me like northern England. All I saw was churches and kind of grey drabness, especially in the winter. But uh, I had a marvellous time. Uh, I was surprised how nice they were with me at the university. I saw Dean Kennedy at the School of Law, uh, who treated me with great kindness, who knew something about the situation I was in, and who admitted me to the university without any query. I had already got a degree from Cambridge, so it was a postgraduate uh, degree I took. It was a very new course. I think in my course there were only two, Karl Morowitz and I. It was a new course, and in the spring of 1943, I got an LLB degree, and the man who gave it to me was Sir William Mulock, who, unlike me, had been in the Laurier cabinet before the First World War. Of course, I didn't know that. I think he had been postmaster general, among other things. A great man, part of Canadian history. Of course, I had no idea. He just seemed to be a very, very old man of some distinction. And I made a lot of friends, and of course a very important thing, the girls. And very soon I had a girlfriend of a sort. I mean, I say of a sort. What I mean was that in puritanical Toronto, boy-girl relations were puritanical. And I don't know, I my memory may be bad. I don't remember anybody, any situation where at on the campus was the kind of thing one knew about. Uh, uh, there were, there was any kind of intimacy which is common now on campuses between boys and girls. I think I make my situation, my, may make it clear what I mean by that. So it was all of a kind of innocent and good, clean fun. And one went to the movies. There were movies, of course, not on the weekend. On Sunday, there were no movies. And one went to restaurants. Very, very modestly. France. And one went to Chinatown. Chinatown, for me, Elizabeth Street, was entirely new and it was delicious. It was, I had not ever had Chinese food in England or in Germany. And it was delicious, and it was cheap, and it was a kind of interesting cultural experience. Now, I also made music. I was, I played in a string quartet, and uh, I knew some people at the conservatory, and I thought the whole musical life of Toronto, I went to concerts. Um, Sir Ernest Macmillan and the General Toronto Symphony, and... I remember with particular affection the St. Matthew Passion, which Sir Ernest conducted every year in Massey Hall. And 
I remember a girl who played the viola very well, and we had a little friendship. And all this was delightful. I also remember two or three important people whom I met at the time, and one was one of my teachers, Bora Laskin, who was then, I guess in his 40s maybe, late 30s, and who was a very, very inspiring and lovely man, inspiring teacher, and who then later became Chief Justice, very great career. And I remember meeting George Grant, who became very big later on, and he wrote the famous book, Lament for a Nation, and I also I remember conversations I had with him. One was his very almost ecstatic delight in Mozart, uh, and he couldn't he knew a lot and and uh, spoke about it with. He was a philosopher. He spoke about it with great insight and empathy. Uh, I, what else can I say? The general atmosphere of Toronto in wartime at the university was very much under the impact of the war. Uh, I was at the, um, I joined the COTC, the uh, Army Cadet Corps, I wore Canadian uniform. Also, I was still technically an enemy alien, but they didn't seem to answer, it didn't seem to matter very much. And I had to report every month to the police because I was still an enemy alien, technically, and I made a point of wearing the uniform of the, in the Canadian Army when I went to the, I went to, when I went to the RCMP offices on Victoria Street. And it amused me to, to appear as a Canadian soldier in uniform. And in the summer of 1943, I think, I spent a week in the army camp, a COTC camp in Niagara on the lake. Uh, uh, I cannot say that I was a particularly gifted soldier, nor can I say that I was a particularly gifted law student. In fact, it didn't seem to me very likely that I would ever turn into a lawyer. And uh, it seemed implausible under the circumstances. And I was kind of right, because at Osgood Hall I was not admitted because of my status as enemy alien. I might have become admitted a year later, but I was not admitted then. Uh, I, my, my partner, my friend and colleague at the university was Karl Morawitz, who also came from one of the camps. And he, unlike me, did become a lawyer and a very good one. He died a few years ago, and his son is now a judge. Um, I was fortunate that one of my professors, Professor Ald, A-U-L-D, was also the editor of the Canadian Abridgment, which was an encyclopedia of legal cases, and I was allowed to write, contribute, summaries of... Canadian case case law, both criminal and civil. And I did this for a year or two. In uh, For 50 cents a case. I got 50 cents a case. And it, it didn't matter whether it was Smith versus Smith, see page 347, 50 cents. But I also got 50 cents for Smith versus Brown, uh, where I had to write eight pages or whatever, eight paragraphs. Uh, uh, it didn't matter. 50 cents a case. And I did this with some interest, and some it did not seem to be a great chore. And I must say, I learned a lot. Not that I learned a lot of law, that I've learned and forgot. But what I learned was to write synopses, to write succinctly, to try and understand what I'm writing and then making it, making it clear. Lucidity was the thing. And I think it did a lot for my style. I think, I hope. And that was 
my year of 1942 and 43, part of 1943, at the University of Toronto, a very, very good year for me, in which I made many friends, and these were friendships which lasted for many years to come. I have now done several of these little videos, and I would be most interested in receiving responses from you. Uh, I'd like to know whether you find these talks useful and entertaining and valuable, and I can always improve, and I would be delighted to hear from you by email. So many thanks for letting me know.